Well, welcome everyone to Double Eagles Ministry. YouTube teaching today is about the dynamic, inspirational, translated life in Jesus Christ. I needed to come and testify to you in these troublesome times about a different life. The revelation of Jesus causes the Word of God to spill forth into phenomena, into your health, your brain, your body, and eternity. It redeems the time. It makes the Word fulfilled in your life. It's like the first time that you get translated by the Spirit of God. It's like a triple jubilee in your body. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost washes you clean. He redeems the time. He redeems you. It's like the cleanest shower you could have ever taken. There are no drugs, no sin, no money, no wealth, no family, no other gods, gurus, or doctrines can give you. When I first sat down in the glory of God, my life was translated in a blink of an eye. Then, when I started to read the Word for the first time because all of a sudden my appetite changed from 10,000 calories a day of, of chicken and beef and potatoes into the living Word of Jesus. His promises come alive when you give your life to Jesus. The title of this YouTube message is called This Translated Life. This is your hope and calling. This is why the gospel's been written. So you translate into the kingdom of God. Even the Old Testament scriptures of how you inherit. God brought them into the promised land to inherit his presence and his everlasting covenant. See, that's when you read the Old Testament. Listen to this. Leviticus 24, verse 8 says, Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. He's talking about a lot of rituals, a lot of steps of faith, and a lot of setups into the kingdom of heaven through obedience. And as you know, Jesus came back to give you rest from your labors and your sorrows. He's the Lord of Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man, not the other way around. Well, I didn't know that when I was first coming into the kingdom and glory of God. I just knew success and hard work was my ticket out of poverty. I didn't know that this was a spiritual life. Do you? Do you know that without the Spirit of God, which is holy, who is omnipresent, your body's dead? Mentally and physically, I was a superhuman in fitness and a broke man in the spirit. My sins had washed ashore. So when I started to enter into his rest, I didn't know until the Lord quickened me supernaturally when I was being translated into his covenant that the Old Testament, the gospel, the covenant, the Pentateuch, the laws in the prophets of God was my personal reward in Christ. I didn't know until the word to my eyes are opened and the word came alive. That when you read these things, a jubilee shall be in the 50th year unto you. You shall not sow nor reap that which grows in itself nor gathers in itself for it's a jubilee to be holy unto you you shall eat the increase thereof out of the field now he's talking about perpetual prosperity perpetual sowing and reaping and restoration as you're being cleansed in the remission of sins going into his covenant Jubilee, even in the Old Testament, 
is about divine perfection and multiplication, restoration, remissions, return unto peace in his power. If you sow diligently in his word, you shall reap eternally into his harvest. That's his everlasting covenant. Seed time and harvest of his living presence, which is God's word, which is God. This translated life that I've witnessed firsthand from the fallen nature of Satan in evil spirits to angels of heaven that encamp around and enforce God's word to God himself. You'll go back in time in your heart and in another dimension. The holiness of God will translate you in the spirit to see things. As soon as I started praying face to face or eye to eye with another spirit filled believer, and spirit filled in his covenant is the living word, or the logs of the fire man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Do you want to take what you are? and fill it with God, who God is. And then what you are can be laid aside as He raises you up to who He is. Twenty years ago, I didn't know I'd become as He is in this world. And this is not some form of doctrine. It's the original truth as it's written. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For I, the Lord thy God, am with you wherever you go. Pass through the host, command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you'll pass over the river Jordan to go and possess the land, which the Lord your God gives you to possess. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost the triple jubilee it comes in threes in three days the mind the will and the emotion from today through the next three days if you sell out and convert your soul into the kingdom of Jesus and seek his face with all your heart God is gonna break the yoke in your life and do something fantastically and astonishing for you. The power of God, the kingdom of God is in the power of the word. This is what I've seen. And he'll translate you out of darkness into his promised land. The promised land is the kingdom of heaven. Paradise needs to enter back in you to receive these blessings. This covenant this translated life. But you've got to break something in your heart. From all the years, blindness, hurt, disbelief, hate, anything, all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. But as I found out in this translated life, and have led many others, every time the word is spoken out of my lips in praise for God and the truth of God. Enlightenment and light springs forth out of my countenance. And my health is restored immediately upon hearing faith. That's different from what the world has. The testimony of God, faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Do you want to prepare your life finally so the devil doesn't steal it every time you get something your health your wealth your life your soul through the sinful ways the sinful man 
Do you want to understand how to get your power back and keep it? People talk about all the time about, about being empowered. There's only one power that has defeated all the power of the enemy. Poverty, sickness, and disease. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. So whatever impossible odds you face, God has the answer. And you can overcome in His presence. From going into impossible debt to impossible supply. The supernatural forces of God. Listen to this. The prophet of God told the people, you want a blessing because you're thirsty? Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet these ditches shall be full of water to feed you and your livestock in your possessions. Are you in a drought right now? Obey the Lord and be established. Obey His prophet and prosper. His word's infallible and continual and perpetual. You know, every time I've ever been in the impossible. And when I came in to the Lord, my life was the impossible. Nothing is impossible to God. If you change and start conforming to His presence as it's written, then the Spirit will start to move invisibly as you start to see His dimension overcome the impossible in this dimension. See, shamans, philosophies, Buddhism, religious philosophies, talk about holiness, talk about experiencing highs, talk about having one foot in the spirit and one foot here, but they do it through altered states in doctrines of demons and drugs. Witchcraft, variances, sin. The only holy one is he that's from above. And his name is Christ Jesus, one with the Father. How would you like to have to be totally raptured into his presence? How would you like the drought of nothingness turning into the bounty of holiness? You've got to do your part to prepare for this inheritance and blessing. We're talking about a translated life, the power of God, the impossible. We're talking about the water turning into wine. We're talking about divine abundance, supernatural divine abundance. Prepare for blessings. If that's what you're seeking, it confounds anything natural. Then it makes sense. It can't to your natural man. It only can to your spirit-filled man. Unless you be born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. God's a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Therefore, your pedigree, age, color, gender, race, sins have nothing to do with the power of God. The devil. Religious doctrines. Nothing compares to Him. There cried a certain woman of the wives of the prophets to Elisha. Elisha was a called the double portion prophet. He had double the miracles of his predecessor, who was the major prophet, Elijah. Thy servant, my husband, the, the widow woman said, is dead, and you know that thy servant did fear the Lord. He had a deposit laid up in heaven, see. The creditors come to take him 
take any of my two sons to be slaves. You want a, a way out of slavery and the bondage to the system? Credit cards about to eat you alive? Taxes and fees and late charge? ATM and IRS has compounded your debts beyond reproach or help here? Nothing else has worked? You've spent your whole life on medical insurance and doctors and you're just as sick as the day or worse than when you went in to diagnose the quote symptom? The root of the problem is the devil and the habits through not having lived in this translated life. Well, here is your way out. Poverty, sickness, and disease. The man of God said, what shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you got in your house here? Not what you don't have. What do you have in your possession right now that you can give God as you're yielded and helpless to have His power come in and translate you to redeem you. To be honored and make you fat. She said, I don't have anything. Save some old pots. Save an old pot of oil. Well, then the man of God said, go borrow the vessels abroad. Go to your neighbors, ask, shall be given, seek, you'll find. Even empty vessels. You don't need anything they got except something empty. An empty water bottle? Take it. It's just like the Jews and the Hebrews on their exodus away out of Egypt. They borrowed from their neighbors for their journey into prosperity. Don't borrow a few. Go for it. Seek, you'll find. Knock, that door shall be open. And when you are come in, shut the doors. Shut the doors upon you and your sons and pour the oil into the empty vessels. Now she'll set aside that which is full. Now what did he just tell her? And what did God just do? If you read on the story, supernaturally, the anointing of God poured out supernaturally. He made invisible nothingness into visible matter and multiplied her oil in her act of obedience. So much so that she could go sell the oil, the finest oil, and pay off her debts. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. Nevertheless, Jesus told one of his disciples, go into the sea, cast your hook, grab the first fish, and out of it will come what you need to pay off the beast, or Caesar. Not to offend them, go do it. So we can get on with blessing and inheritance and covenant. Oh boy, now we go on to the health issue, the incurable diseases part, autoimmune systems, poisons, environmental toxins. We took care of your money, now we're going to take care of your health. Beloved. I wish above all things as you prosper and be in health, even as a soul prospers. There was a mighty man. He had all the money in the world. He had all the authority and power and position in the world. Naaman the Syrian was a victorious 
military man. He was a captain of the hosts. And he was a leper. No amount of spices or customs or foreign gods or rituals could wipe him clean of this incurable disease. His pride was broken. Almost. He finally had to humble himself before God. And there was a little handmaid from Israel that said, I know of a man of God in the land. Go talk to him and he'll tell you what to do. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover of his leprosy. Now that, that just confounds everything. Is that what you need right now? You need your cancer, your sins, your guilt, wiped clean and washed clean with hope. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. In the evidence of things not yet seen, do you believe it? You have to believe it to see it. You have to want to humble yourself and change to keep it. Then you have to testify where, who, and how you recovered out of the impossible. And tell others the good news without getting stolen from and getting lifted up in pride. You have to become translated to have the miracle translate you so Jesus can get the glory. Look, don't I love holistic food, good thoughts, exercise, mindset of a champion, World class. The Bible says cover the best things for yourself. But that's what the world's missing. The one person who makes all that righteous. In righteousness shall thou be established. But you need the righteous one to get the credit. Not your talent, your money your family, your gifts, your connections, your luck. I've dealt with some people that have spent all that up. Their past help. Their pain has overtaken them. No amount of exercise, no amount of sin, no amount of medical doctors can help. And in God's Word, in a twinkle of an eye, translates them into... The cure. Christ is that cure. So the man of God didn't even go and see the, the leper. He told his servant, go tell him to wash himself in the river Jordan. Go do it seven times. All seven levels of your spirit being. Not your seven chakras. Not your pressure points, not acupuncture, not your third eye. You need to be seated in heavenly places and let God wash you clean through the washing of the water, the Word, and the regeneration of His Holy Spirit. So when they indwell in you, purity purges the poison. That's what happens over and over. That's what's happened to me to this day. Death, disease, demons, unclean spirits. Christ comes, manifests, and washes me and that person there clean. Pricked his pride. Don't you hate that? They finally talked him into it, and he went and dipped himself seven times in this dirty river, supposedly. When he had much cleaner places in his land, 
River far, far knows. Go dip yourself in that swamp, I'll tell you something. You want a blessing? He did it and became clean. You might think that piece of mud puddle down there is dirty. Jesus uses the mud and the dirt to heal you. Will you let him? As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. My health or my life has been given back to me because of the light of the world of Jesus. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Jesus wants to indwell in you. And his countenance can be seen on you. The sower sows the word. The word of God is hope, blessing, love, power, judgment, mercy, compassion, and truth. When Jesus had thus spoken to this blind boy, he spit on the ground and made a spittle. I mean, and anointed his eyes of the blind man with clay. Spit in clay. The two most dirtiest places, supposedly, man's mouth and dirt to heal the impossible. So the blind man would go wash himself in the pool of Siloam to see. He'd obey God to walk there, be led with a face full of mud and spit and go wash himself if he chose to be obedient to receive a miracle that money can't buy to see. Whoa! Guess what? He did it. He went and washed and he saw. He did the one thing God told him to do. So, is that what you want? This divine superabundance of the impossible? The watered down gospel of Jesus is not the Jesus I know. He's just not a feel-good kumbaya. Yeah, he's the God of the impossible. He will give you comfort and rest and renewal and healing. And then perfection. That's why you're going to lose and fail. That's all part of salvation. All as you're tripping over into a divine superabundance miracle for just saying yes to him and telling the truth to others. This instructional YouTube is to inspire you to live this translated life. And then no matter what comes at you, how you back off darkness is through the spoken word of light, of God, the truth that sets you free. I am the light of this world and in me is no darkness at all. This is your testimony. If you just start testifying of the story that you have, what you've experienced. Listen, I told this fellow once who came over, and it was at, I was at my wit's end and moving for the 50th time with my wife. He came over to help me move. It looked like a hobbling cripple when he walked in the door. House, family, job, 401k, worked at a hospital. All, all the medications, all the therapy, all the rest, all the church going, none of it helped him until he walked into my door and I said, what's wrong? He said, my knees give me problems. 
He had that knee problem for 30 years. I said, well, come on over here. I'm sitting on my plastic chair. He's helping me pack out of a one-room hotel room. I'm on my last leg. I said, let me take a look at that. He sat down. I put my hands on his knee, just taking a, just a little bit of looking at it. All of a sudden, the Lord came through my hands and pop! His knee popped back into place. We both went, did you hear that? Yeah, I looked, I touched it again, it popped again. Next thing I know, his kids are telling me he's running around like he's in high school again. And all the only thing he had to do was keep testifying to that miracle. And Jesus said, somebody had touched me for I perceived that virtue has gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid because she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared on him before all the people... It was her that touched him and how she was healed immediately. God wants to do something for you right now. You have to make the crooked path straight. You have to break off sin with righteousness. I mean, you only got to do your part. You do your part, God's bound by His Word to do His. You don't do your part and continue in His Word. He's not bound to you for nothing. To much is given, much is required. To him that has, more should be given and in abundance. To him that has not, even what he does have is taken away. That's the multiplying manna. That's the translated life. That's how when Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits and all devils to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. And he healed the sick. And people came from all around, desperate for an answer. The Holy Ghost revival, being spirit-filled, And when they came to see Jesus, just come and see. Come and see this man that has helped me. That has saved me. I want to help him and pay back the faith. My testimony is just that simple. Come and see for yourself and watch what happens in your life. And then you, the testifier, get a double blessing for opening your mouth in this translated life. God is a multiplier. Tenfold is just an Old Testament tithing beginning. Triple jubilee compounded in divine perfection in a double portion of God in the Father and the Son is just the beginning of reaping paradise in you for you and by you in Christ's life. I mean, this quick story of the fishes and the loaves just opens our eyes. And when the people, when they knew it, followed him and he received them and spake unto them the kingdom of God. Just what he told his disciples. Go preach. Heal the sick. Preach. Behold. The kingdom of God is here. Here's your promised land. Israel, prince of God. The light of God. The power of God. The mighty force of God. God is love. And when the day began to wear away, they came, the twelve came and said, 
send the multitude away. All of a sudden, because they're testifying and believing and seeing phenomena and people are coming to the light. They, had, they weren't ready for it. 3,000 in one day? We're going to have millions come to light at the sound of my voice and the message of God. He's all powerful. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere at one time. And pings of light around the globe will saturate and defeat sickness, poverty, hunger, violence, hate, and evil. But if you wash yourself in this phenomenon, your mind will be clear to see this. So doctrines won't blind you. So you sell your soul. Well, Jesus told his disciples, all these people here, give them something to eat. Well, you know darn well sometimes you don't got the cash to pay for steak dinners for 25 people. Or you just got out of debt now you're going to lay down two grand for some cheeseburgers? For a hundred people? I don't think so. How do you feel? Come ye buy milk without money and wine without price. My wife and I had a gathering together once of over 30 people. I was flat broke. I had more than a dozen of them staying in a in the house that we didn't even own. And I was so spent out from the journeys and the seasons and the trials and the supernatural on my deathbed, being really healthy. This is nothing to do with natural health. Jesus was manifesting through me. I had a man fly with his son 2,000 miles to sit upright in a chair in my living room to get a healing and a deliverance, screaming at the top of his lungs after we just fed him, massaged him, gave a Bible study, and then I had him look at me and Jesus appeared and he started screaming, Christ is in you people. Thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah. And he was not some church, front row church pew guy. He was a truck mechanic. Rough on the outside and a little boy's heart on the inside. Because God touched him for the first time in years. And he did it through me and a bunch of other faithful witnesses full of love that showed him through entreatment and natural affection and the power of God, divine love. And Christ stepped out and healed him. That night, my wife gave a concert in our house. And we fed all these people with one 12-pound turkey that somebody had brought. Because I was out of gas, out of money, and out of food. And that turkey meat multiplied for people at seconds and thirds. No one passed out after that. It was just overwhelmingly beautiful. <laughs> And the disciples said, we don't have but two fishes and five loaves here. There are about 5,000 people now. That's 5,000 men. And he said unto them, make them sit down in companies of 50. Prepare them to be blessed. And they did so and made them sit down. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes and he looked up to heaven. And he blessed it. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples to give to the multitude, and they all were fed. Matter of fact, they went and picked up, after all that, 12 basket full of fragments. He asked them, Who do you, who do you say that I am? They said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. That's who he is. He's not an angel. 
He's not just a great prophet. He's not one of the great religions. He's Jesus Christ. The Savior of the whole world. That's the exciting part in this resurrected, translated life. It's through the blood of Christ that washes you clean. Do you want this life? I'm a living example, a living witness. I've seen the most impossible miraculous. I've, the Lord through me has raised the dead. When you sit still face to face, in a sanctified, clean, anointed room and allow the presence of Jesus Christ to manifest. You'll start to feel the tingling sensations of the Holy Ghost opening up your blood capillaries. Your heart might flutter as the Spirit moves through and opens you up and relaxes you in a peace that passes an indescribable passes all understanding. And then as you meditate in Christ and your mind is clear because the demons of darkness back off in the presence of light of God. The whole gospel of Christ is peace in His presence. That's what this translated life is about. And your eyes might burn as His manifested dimensional presence starts to omnipresently come through another person's countenance. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give us the light and the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is what God's trying to seal the remnant with of His everlasting covenant in the presence of His light in His person in his paradise, in you. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway for our God. You usually have to be at your worst or tried everything else. You're very rich and powerful, but your beloved son, daughter, or wife is terminally ill, and you need an answer right now. You have a mental affliction of secret sins that can't that you are suffering so painfully with. You come in private and get delivered. All you're going to have to do is glorify God openly and be happy and free. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. God is perfectionist getting out the rough ends out of your life. Let me just put it to you that way. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. What do you want? That's, that's who he's looking for faithful man, that he can commit unto the gospel of the revelation of the New Testament of his blood to make 
the whole history of mankind from Adam till right now to eternity. A faithful witness and a prosperous one and a whole one. Now and forever. I will close with this today. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. You don't think God's in control of everything? The seven seals of judgment? Divine judgment? He's going to take the beast and them that worship the beast and the fallen angels and cast them in the lake and fire which burns forever and ever? Meanwhile, you go into the eternal millennial reign with God? No more tears, sorrow, sin? We'll get to that in a minute. Sorrow banished? Now I will say this. I've loved the trials and the adversity and the hardships and you learn to embrace them in Christ. But we're talking about something so far beyond all that. saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the service of God in their foreheads. And you just thought it was the beast trying to s stick you with a chip in your head, or in your hand, right hand. That's the system of the beast. The presence of God is the spirit. The presence of God is the pure light, the peace, the knowing, and the comfort they go with. The Spirit of God. The kingdom of heaven is what he wants to seal you in now and forever. Say it, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, being to our God for and ever and ever, Ever, amen. One of the elders in heaven said unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Hmm. You know that virtuous woman? The bride of Christ, adorned, huh? Whence did they come from? I said unto him, Sir, you know, do you know how you get out of this? These are they which came out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He sits on the throne and shall dwell among them. They shall not, they shall hunger no more, nor thirst, Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I hope this teaching today, I hope this conversation today, gives you the courage and the faith to change in this and live this translated life of Jesus Christ both now and forever. And I want to thank you. I want to, I want to give God the praise for you, the one that is standing and testifying of your life in Jesus. The love of God the power of light. I want to thank you for joining me today. Until next time.